About a hundred years ago, we discovered that if you take a group of cancer cells and you shoot that group with a beam of radiation, these cancer cells will start to die. This profound discovery is one of the main reasons why more people are able to survive cancer today than before. However, there is one catch that the radiation that we need to use in order to kill these cancer cells has to be an ionizing radiation, which means that it has so high energy that it's able to destroy the chemical bonds between the atoms and molecules inside the cells. In fact, that's how we can kill cancer cells with radiation. The ionizing radiation destroys the DNA and other structures within the cancer cells and force them to die. This phenomena is the holy grail and the guiding principle of radiotherapy. The problem, however, is that we are currently facing two types of challenges, an obvious problem and a hidden problem. Let's start first with that obvious one. In reality, cancer cells are not born as nice clusters in a lab, but rather born inside our bodies, hidden between very important organs and surrounded by a large number of healthy normal cells. So if we send that beam of ionizing radiation in the same way we do in a lab, we will kill so many healthy cells that will instead lead the patient to suffer or die from the side effects of radiation instead of their cancer disease. And if we are not careful with how we use radiation, these side effects can be terrible, leading to internal bleeding, burn injuries, and even cause secondary cancer. Yes, you heard that right. Radiation, when it's used wrong, can cause more cancer than before. Now, to add even more complexity to that problem, we have been constantly developing advanced treatment machines with amazing treatment capabilities, creating a new physics algorithms, developing a new softwares, and discovering a new treatment techniques since the beginning of the 20th century. So the billion dollar question today is, how can we communicate and take advantage of all these advanced treatment machines, create precise treatment plans, learn new things from the massive amount of stored patient data we have in our databases, and use all that to deliver the best possible treatment for today's cancer patients. So this is what I define as the biggest hidden problem in radiotherapy. So let's dive into it. There's one question that you might be thinking of right now. Why do we need so many treatment machines to treat cancer? Can't we just have one? Well, so far, the answer seems to be that having many advanced treatment machines means that we can deliver radiation in many different ways that will allow us to treat cancer better than we did before. The machines that we have today can deliver treatments from many angles, with different dose rates, different types of radiation, while constantly calculating, taking x-ray images, and shielding healthy organs from radiation. This development, in fact, allowed us to reduce the side effects and also treat more cancer patients with techniques never seen before. But this means that we have so many different machines from many different companies that, of course, are trying to make a significant impact in the fight against cancer, which is a super awesome thing for the patients. But it could be a big challenge from the clinical and a practical point of view if you have to learn and work with many different systems and machines. In addition to that, every treatment delivery that we have today is based on the unique individual patient anatomy and their type of cancer. This, of course, means that we have increased the complexity of our treatment plans and increased the demand for advanced softwares, faster physics algorithms, and higher accuracy calculations. So by now, I hope that you can start to realize the core of this growing problem. We have many machines, many treatment techniques, and a massive amount of patient data to keep track of. So a nice and a logical solution to this problem could be to have one way to communicate with all these different treatment machines in our clinics and plan every patient treatment on one software, rather than having many different softwares and machines that don't communicate with each other. This kind of solution would be super powerful to have in the clinic if it also can keep track of our patient data and learn from this data to improve radiotherapy for our future cancer patients either by using AI or some statistical methods. Now, luckily enough, we live in a time where such solutions do exist. So let me take you to Stockholm and visit one of the leading companies that are dedicating their time and resources to solve this exact problem. By the way, if you are watching this video on LinkedIn, then I have only included the highlights of our conversations due to the limited video size policy on LinkedIn. But you can watch the full interviews on my YouTube channel if you'd like to know more. Alrighty, let's start our interviews. What is coming right now is, of course, the online adaptive. That's uh, where we're doing a lot of work. It's uh, both on, I mean, the physics and algorithm side, creating synthetic CTs, 
making the dose computation and optimization very fast, also including deep learning segmentation for the organs. So all of that has to work seamlessly, but, but then it's very much also about the workflow to make everything smooth and, and make it feasible in this short amount of time. And then the stereotactic treatments, uh, we're looking into grouping of the tumors to get uh, less leakage to surrounding tissue and also a smart couch angle optimization in combination with that. One really big thing is, is the deep learning segmentation and, and getting that fast. So, so now we're working on the efficiency and uh, increasing the speed of the deep learning segmentation at the same time as we include more and more models uh, in uh, our uh, product portfolio. So what one big news is that we now have the lymph nodes for the head and neck region, which is, I mean, extremely tedious to do manual contouring uh, of. We, we have a, a really cool new machine from Hitachi, the Oxray machine, which is a ring gantry that could also swivel around, uh, which uh, requires some uh, advanced treatment planning that we're working on. Yeah, that, that's a great question. So, I mean, first I would like to say that radiotherapy uh, and treatment planning is already personalized in a way that other treatments aren't because you take in an image of, of the patient and then you make a treatment plan specifically for that patient. So, I mean, that's personalized, but you can do more, of course, because what we do now is, is that we prescribe a dose to a specific type of patients for, for that kind of site. Uh, and, and the key here is to do more imaging, really, to do PET, SPECT, MRI with, with different weighting. You can do diffusion or perfusion uh, weighting to get more information about uh, the internal tumor uh, characteristics. So, and, and when you have found that, then, then you can do dose painting inside the tumor to prescribe different dose levels to different parts of the tumor to, to really try to treat those parts of the tumors. And, and we actually just have had an Italian PhD student visiting for six months and he has been working on this for sacral chordomas and seeing that there was a big relapse for those tumors with high cellularity. And that was coming from MRI images with diffusion weighting. And from these images, they could then try to do a, a dose painting together with us. So, so that's, that's a way to do the more personalized radiotherapy. And then on, on the other end, of course, re-irradiation is in some sense also personalized, but because then you take into the history, you can see that the adaptive strategies is also personalized because now we're just making a treatment plan for the full treatment and you actually need to take into account all these uncertainties. And, and finally, you can also think about the NTCP modeling, which takes in lifestyle factors and, and NTCP could of course be incorporated into the optimization itself. I will try to narrow it down to, to three points like speed, uh, automation uh, and uncertainties, I would say. So, so uncertainties uh, there, I mean, the, the main uncertainties now that we see are the anatomical changes and, and that we can address with the online or fast offline adaptive to do that for, for every patient. But also, I mean, always take into account different uncertainties in your treatment planning. And we have been doing that for a long time with robust optimization. So for patient setup, but also density uncertainties. So, so that is something that has become a standard in, in proton and carbon ion therapy, but it's also gaining some uh, more momentum in photons. So I, I think that's good. And then of course, it's key with speed so, so that uh, it's fast to, to make those computations, but also the optimization, because in, in this setting you, you have a lot of different scenarios that can occur, and, and then you need to do that in, in a fast manner. And then uh, if we look at automation, I, I think that that is something that we really could work more on. Uh, we already touched upon the deep learning segmentation. I think that's really key uh, for, I mean, the whole industry. And then also coming to, to deep learning planning. Uh, and it's, it's really to get these fast treatment plans uh, from an image and to, to an end of the treatment plan. 
So, so that's really good to have that automation, but also that it gets consistent. Uh, so it shouldn't depend so much on the individual doctor or medical physicist, uh, which kind of treatment you get. So, so that's, that's really good. Uh, and then in terms also of automation and speed, I, I would say more on the clinical side is, is the patient-specific QA, I think. I mean, that is really something we need to get rid of uh, now. Uh, it has been over two decades we have the intensity modulated uh, radiotherapy and, and of course you, you need to be cautious at the start but now we have seen it working for such a long time and it would be sufficient to do some secondary dose calculation and machine QA uh, more, I mean, from time to time. So Raker is designed to be centered around the patient. Um, we believe that a key strength of Raycare is that we combine all the modalities, all the user groups, all the teams around one patient workflow, one oncology workflow for the patient because uh, it has inherent automation in terms of propagating data to wherever you need it within the research systems, but it also adds another layer using the scripting support that uh, allows you to really automate any task or activity in the system. And this in combination with that the research products also act as a unity with Raycare driving the workflows all the way into Ray Station and all the way to the treatment control room and so forth. That brings an, a, a unity that allows the, allows the user to focus on the patient care and the workflows allow you to really have more time to spend with the patient care and uh, with the more complex tasks. And that that in itself uh, creates a great value, making sure that everyone shares the same view of the patient and has the data, all the structured data collected and bringing you even more opportunities to eliminate manual actions and promote efficiencies. Mm -hmm. There are, there are multiple examples that I'd love to share with you, but one that's really recent and top of mind is uh, Iridium Cancer Network in Antwerp, Belgium. They've been using Raycare since 2017, and uh, they have been uh, using that as a, as a productivity companion to RayStation, um, uh, together with ARIA. And they're actually preparing for uh, their full OAS transition uh, to Raycare and to start treating patients with the true beam in just a few months. And they've really dug into the automation and workflows uh, capabilities of Raycare and they, are, uh, they have crafted some really nice, I would say semi-automated workflows to increase their productivity. One of these examples being that they have a task, an automated task in their workflow that allows them to do a background script uh, that runs a plant quality check that would take a radiation oncologist maybe 10-15 minutes to perform and that's just kicked off in the background and performed automatically without no one having to take any time for that and that saves them more than a hundred plus hours per year of radiation oncologist time. So Raycare has been designed and developed from scratch in the past 10 plus years and that gives us a tremendous advantage because most of these new requirements on the product they were at least to a certain extent known to us when we started designing it so we have been able to take the the need for structured data the need for being able to communicate with other systems using standardized interfaces and cybersecurity. we have been able to take those as design inputs to the platform putting us in a really good position uh, to handle those uh, challenges today and for cybersecurity in particular uh, we have had specialists working from day one uh, for the platform towards this important goal. And still today we conduct uh, regularly uh, different sorts of reviews. We hire external experts to try to hack our systems just to ensure that we are keeping uh, the security top notch because it's one of the most important things that we can do to protect the privacy of our patients. I think it's important that we all respect that it's the clinic's choice how they can make create the best possible patient treatments and they need to be able to choose the pieces of that puzzle and our job is to make sure that that data can move smoothly between those systems 
because that's how we can create innovation, we can create more opportunities to really evolve patient care, I feel. So there's kind of two uh, answers to the question. Different machines have different abilities. So it's good for a hospital, say it's a kind of regional provider of uh, cancer care to have uh, different capabilities in different machines because different cancer types require uh, sometimes you treat really small targets, uh, sometimes if you uh, treat uh, children you need different technologies than otherwise. And if you can use one planning system for all of them that uh, is um, uh, much more convenient and easier to maintain from a staffing point of view, you can focus your training on that one system instead of having to learn different systems with their different quirks for uh, each individual uh, treatment unit. So there's always the efficiency aspect. Do provide the cancer care that is provided now, but more efficiently, because we, we see uh, there's going to be an increase in the need for cancer treatments and maybe a decrease in, in resources available to, to provide the, uh, the treatment. This, of course, also applies to regions that are very undersupplied in, uh, in uh, radiation treatments, such as Africa, for instance. If we can help bring radiation treatment to, um, to Africa, for instance, by, by having more software support, that would be a great thing. So efficiency is one, but then of course to improve the quality of the actual treatments. And, and there we're not in the business of figuring out which cancer is which and which cancer needs what type of treatment. So somebody has done, the medical profession has done that, but then it's for us to manage the targeting and actually hitting it right and their adaptive radiation therapy has always been part of the vision for us and that goes to the future as well and uh, as, uh, as you know that means to change the treatment plan or really ideally in real time but at least every day so that it tracks how the patient changes how the tumor hopefully shrinks or, or moves so that we can hit it with higher precision and don't hit the surrounding tissues so much and that can lead to fewer treatment fractions. And, and I think of that as, I mean, I try to picture uh, what it would be to be a, a cancer patient. One thing you find out, you have cancer. Uh, that's a big thing to deal with. And then you have a wait until your first treatment. That can be reduced. That would add a lot, not only in efficiency, but also in patient experience, if you can get treatment the same day or next day. And then if it is only five, treatments you're done in a week. It's cancer week and it's maybe cumbersome and, and uh, the threatening with the, um, uh, how the treatment is, is uh, delivered but then you're done and that's a big difference compared to these five or six week regimens that, that radiation therapy is often delivered as now. So if ray station can be a part of that evolution that, that's for sure part of our vision. Then there's also ray care. Which, which has the efficiency aspect uh, uh, as well and the potential to become a learning system, to make better use of data, not kind of um, well, throw away or, or fail to utilize the, uh, the data that is inherently captured in various places, but not all the time. The dots aren't always connected so that you can track what you did in terms of dose and anatomical uh, changes and track that compared to outcomes. I think in general what our customers are very happy about is just optimization. So how we have uh, and how we handle optimization in Ray Station. So first of all we have a very uh, good speed and that speed that you can have so you can easily go and re-optimize, you can adapt your plans, you can, you can just have more uh, flexibility to work with the plans because you have that speed so it is a, uh, one of the key features, but then our optimization also have these functions, inbuilt functions that uh, provide a wide variety of how to create a plan where you want to put more focus so you can personalize in the sense of what is your clinic approach or where you want to put uh, more focus as a clinic. Another key feature uh, I've been hearing from our customers that they enjoy is uh, our automation. So how automated the whole process can be uh, in RayStation. So we have these uh, inbuilt scripting environments, which basically gives you the whole world of uh, everything you want to do. And we also do offer training in scripting. Uh, but besides scripting, we have protocols, which is also letting you optimize your uh, plan creation. We have uh, 
uh, atlas-based segmentation, we have uh, deep learning segmentation, uh, we also have machine learning planning. Uh, but we've been hearing that uh, uh, customers feel comfortable and secure, so after they have their uh, installations in clinics of PlayStation, they are never left alone. Like it's never. So we installed, we you have it, and now you're on your own. We have this continuous conversation between us and customers, which I think works very well both way because this is the best way how we learn of what we learn, what is the most important, and where we should put our focus in the future. And also, customers they feel more and more secure to use. Uh, the full potential that uh, RayStation as a software can offer. So that you have a patient coming in, I mean, you know what tumor it is and, and, and what stage and everything. You know the ICD codes, for example. When the images have been acquired for that specific treatment site, images go directly to, to the system, to the tumor planning system, to RayStation. We process those images, we segment them. We generate the target volumes, we generate the protocols based on what the clinics have specified should happen for this specific uh, patient case. And then we can automatically generate different treatment plans. And when the user then opens the system, and this can be just minutes later, it doesn't have to be days or even hours, you, you see different alternatives that this patient, how it could be treated. That could be different treatment machines or treatment modalities. In the longer run, it may even be radiotherapy versus some other treatment modality. So you move, you basically flip the whole workflow around from, from starting from scratch to starting by reviewing. And I think that there will be a big change and it's definitely on the way. Yeah, so I think if you look at the, the portfolio, product portfolio, Ray Search, then with Ray Station and Ray Care, and then we command, of course, the control system. But now we also have a new product, analytics product, Ray Intelligence. We call this like the Ray world <laughs> of the, like the product world that we have here at Ray Search. And by co combining these, uh, we believe we're going to implement this, this vision where we have the automation, but also this da automatic data feed and the automatic kind of making the data available for the user through intelligence so they can start to connect these dots. And also having it centralized so that maybe a country can benchmark how they do and come up with the best way to, to treat patients in the future. I think th this is where we are going as, as a company and, and with the Ray World concept. The one thing to keep in mind as an end user in the clinical workflow with, with uh, any AI for clinical use is that it will be fantastic, it will work, it will save time, but it will not always work. So keep an eye for the odd cases uh, and review the results. It will be more and more robust over time, but I, I don't think we will ever go to the 100.0% success on models in clinical use, because there will always be cases when we develop and test the models here that we haven't seen out there. I think that's, that's the message for, for like the end users of the systems. Yeah, we have a lot of testimonies. I mean, there's a lot of them, but some of maybe the best one, the very concrete, is a Norwegian clinic. It's, it's in Ålesund. And we have worked with them on different models, and they have implemented them and used them clinically. And they came back here, uh, maybe it's a year ago or six months ago, and, and said, well, we, we have a lot of time now to collaborate on a new project because we have automated the segmentation in the clinic. And that is super interesting. And we see these indications, the time saving is the first thing that will basically come out of using the deep learning race station. And, and, and this was so concrete that they basically said, well, since we have automated this now, let's collaborate on something new. And that was fantastic. So just a quick summary of what's happening is Raysearch is a software company that have created this product that allow you to do so much in your clinic. And using these modules, you are able to do your treatment planning, communicate with different treatment machines, and solve a lot of these challenges that I mentioned previously in the video. So I hope that you learned something new today and get inspired by the work of Raysearch. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.